Hey guys, this is Jay Snow, and we have a Overwatch review for you guys. So this game is the MOBA first-person shooter coming out from Blizzard Entertainment, the makers of World of Warcraft and Hearthstone. And this review is basically going to take everything, mostly everything, in the open beta and put it together. And the game does come out, I think, May 10th. And right now it's an open beta till May 9th. So you can actually play it for free right now and try it out. So what I'm looking at right here is all the customizable options. So you can customize a whole bunch of stuff on this game, which is pretty cool. And the game's price tag is $40 for the base edition. And they said that you won't have to pay anything as of now. We still don't know if there will be any DLC plans or anything like that. Right now, everything that I'm showing you right now, like fun, awesome, random emotes from the characters, you can actually just unlock in-game from leveling up. So we also have skins, of course. You know, what kind of mobile game doesn't have skins? And I love this game because I love, I'm a huge Bioshock fanboy. And there's a, even a map that looks like Bioshock. And then also these two skins right here for Bastion, my favorite character. Kind of resemble a Big Daddy. It's a little bit of a stretch, but once you see the uh, London map, you'll actually get that Bioshock, maybe get that Bioshock feel that I got. Uh, right here we also have the emotes. Uh, you might not be able to hear them because the sound is a little bit lower because the game is extremely loud. Uh... There's also highlight intros, which are a little interesting. There's only a few, so there's not really that many, but I guess it's just kind of to show off your badassness. Like a little yellow bird on a giant killing machine. But anyway, <laughs> uh, what do you call it? So Bastion's my favorite character because he was... he, he I think he's probably going to get a nerf, but he's really OP with the turrets. And his, basically his goal for the game, and in the MOBA, you want to play your class... Uh, what do you call it? Cause that's how you win if you play a class correctly. So basically with him, you're just hiding in corners, setting up your turn. So when another hero runs in, it's unexpected and you just kill them really quick. Uh, here's a loot box. I didn't get any loot boxes and I failed by like I think two points for getting one. Here's the friends online list. Here's the uh, career profile. So as you can see, you have all your stats for all your characters. I obviously play Bastion the most. Uh, and I've apparently played Reaper for under a minute. Wow. So I've only tried out about five of the heroes so far. I did try out almost every single one just for one round. But I didn't really like a lot of them. But this game does have a very good amount of heroes. And I think there's something for everyone. And because the game is really simple, which I'll go into in a little bit, I think you'll find your favorite hero within probably the first ten minutes of playing the game. Uh, right here we have player icons. And now we're going to the options really quick. Now the options are very, very good. There's plenty of ways you can customize the game. And they have a very extensive colorblind option too. So Blizzard is definitely very good with people with uh, gaming handicaps. So you can customize a lot in your colorblind options. It's not like, you know, you just check one box for colorblind. Oh, uh, you have all your volume settings. I had to mess around with that. My mouse sensitivity is actually only 15. But once you see me in game, it's not going to look like 15. Uh, for some reason, I was actually surprised it was at 15, but it goes really fast for 15, so... Or, fast enough for me. Of course, if you guys want to get more sensitivity, you can easily do that. So, on open beta, we have play, play versus AI, which you actually play with players versus the AI. And then you have tavern brawls, and instead they call them weekly brawls, which is pretty interesting. So they kind of ripped that off from Hearthstone, that every week you get a new special rule set. So this one's just random heroes. Uh, for people to try out the game, I guess, you know, play with random heroes, but I suck with most heroes. So, what I did was I set up a uh, AI match for the first match that I'm going to show you guys. And then the second match is going to be, uh, what do you call it? a full match unedited, for the most part, with the uh, players. So, this map, King's uh, Plaza, I just missed it because I'm trying to commentate right over it. Reminds me exactly like Bioshock. It's like a mix of Bioshock 1 and Bioshock Infinite. So as you can see, you can kind of see like the Bioshock 1 thing, like here's one of the areas in Bioshock 1 that had like red tubes. I think it's like the fourth level where you meet Andrew Ryan or whatever. Spoilers. <laughs> but anyway, uh, you can see the random writing on the wall. That's another thing in Bioshock. You would always see like random stuff on the wall. I mean, it wasn't blood, but in this one it's just in, I guess, paint. <laughs> it is very T for after all. And then once you start going through the area... You'll notice it starts to look like Bioshock Infinite with all the nice looking style buildings. There goes the London Clock Tower. It's also really cool that they used the real life locations, but made it like Overwatch style. So I definitely appreciate that. It's really cool. I don't think there's a New York map, but if there is one, I haven't played it yet. Or B, they should make them a New York map. <laughs> Times Square, uh, obviously. 
So right here at the beginning of the match, and I do absolutely horrible because I just get completely stomped. But basically, what I'm trying to do here is trying to set up my turret so I can kill off as many people as possible and slow them down. So right here, I got killed by I think what was it, Agent 87 or whatever. He's like a basic running class. So now let's talk about my class Bastion. Now I can't talk about all the classes because there's so many, but Bastion is basically a big ass robot with a bird, and he has a main machine gun. So as you can see right here, you can get kills with the machine gun, and it's really easy too. I was actually surprised by my second game. I actually got a 20 kill streak. Uh, I think I had a video on my channel. I have a video on my channel of it, but I actually got a 20 kill streak just from running around shooting people with the gun, with a mix of the gun and turn. So, but that is not his main purpose. His main purpose is his special abilities. So for me, I think it's left shift. You can change the controls, but for me, left shift, shift puts him into turret mode. Hitting E will actually repair him up. So actually right here, you can see I just kind of like <laughs> YOLO'd the turret and just smashed it down and tried to kill somebody. Uh, e is to heal yourself up. And then Q is your special ability, which will I think will go off in just a little bit right here. So right now, I'm taking a strategic position because one... The game has a few modes, I'll talk about that in a second. Here's the special, the ultimate. So basically you gain ultimate while playing the game. I think it goes even while you're just walking around in circles. My ultimate is obviously this huge big ass tank thing that just blows people up. Uh, I do end up dying though. So now going back to the objectives. Uh, what do you call it? So far, because it's open beta, they don't have any set objective games. So there's only really quick play you can do. And for the most part, you get this thing where you have to defend two points. Now, it's either you defend two solid points, which I mean they don't move, or it's either B, you defend a solid point, and then it moves to an escort mission, which is pretty interesting. So right now, they captured point A, I think, already, so by this point in the video, so now they're switching over to the escort mission. So now they have to escort that thing before the time runs out, and the enemy team can capture it and make it sit there and not move. So that's kind of the goal. So, in, I guess, in fairness, I tried to switch to some other heroes. Now, I'm going to explain ahead of time I absolutely suck at these heroes. But anyway, I tried to try out the Pistol Cowboy dude, because I completely forgot his name. But anyway, uh, what I call it, basically his left shift is just like a sprint. His E, I think, is like some sort of flash grenade or whatever. It doesn't really do much damage. And the left click trigger does a, a quick shot. I don't think Bastion actually has a left click, a left click, um, I mean right click, I should be saying. He doesn't have really a right click ability, so, uh, what do you call it? Some characters have right click ability, some don't. Uh, here's where I switched to Agent 87 or whatever his name was. 57? I can't remember the number. But anyway, he's like your standard Call of Duty class. Your left click is actually a sprint, which Bastion doesn't have, which is unfortunate, but that would probably make him way too OP if he can actually sprint. This guy's like your standard soldier, and he does have a healing ability if you hit E where you throw a little healing spear. So he's like the standard class uh, you play with, I think, even in the beginning of the game in the tutorial. And he's pretty good. If you do like that Call of, St Call of Duty style, you know, run around and kill people, then this is the class for you. But for the most part with this game, you can play it like Call of Duty. I mean, even the, even the uh, UI kind of looks Call of Duty-ish, even though I would say more on the Battlefield side. side. Uh, what do you call it? You'll mostly die because of depending on the spawn. And I'm actually going to explain the map uh, in a little bit because I do have negatives about this game, but otherwise it runs extremely smooth. It was really simple to pick up and play. I absolutely suck at Team Fortress 2. Uh, what do you call it? Team Fortress 2 is, I guess, the game you would mostly compare this to because it's basically almost the same thing, kind of. And I was never really a fan of Team Fortress 2 because there wasn't really a. Uh, I didn't like the fact that there wasn't that many machine guns in the game, and also I, I just, I, you know, I basically just didn't do good at it. But that's just a personal opinion. So uh, right here, I get my ultimate ability on the soldier, and I actually didn't know what it was, so I kind of just hit Q, and basically you just get a little bit of time, and I guess you just get some kind of like auto shot thing. I don't know. What, I have no idea what it was, to be honest. So you can pick from four classes. Uh, you can pick from a tank class, which is like Fast Bastion, you can pick a DPS class, which is like me, even though he's semi-healing. There is a healing class where basically instead of shooting the gun at players, you shoot the gun at your allies. I mean, it's instead of shooting guns at the enemies, you shoot guns at the al uh, yeah, allies, and you heal them up. So it is important for your team to try to have one of each type of character, but you can win games without it. Like in this game, I think we only had one healer or something like that. 
So here's Tracer, Tracer, excuse me. And this was that controversial character with the sexy butt pose that people got in arms over. <laughs> and to be honest, right now I think she sucks as far as the class, because basically her only ability is to shoot these two guns, and then her shift ability is to kind of port forward, and then her E ability is to go backwards in time, which is pretty cool. So right now I'm actually gonna uh, hit. Uh, what do you call it? E? I think I just did it. I'm not. Yeah, there you go. Right there was the uh, go backwards in time kind of thing. So, but she does really, really low damage. And you also have to remember in this game, there's not really um any. Uh, what do you call it? There's no weapon customization really. Some classes do have like two different weapon modes, but otherwise, this is not a game where you pick up weapons or even ammo. Ammo is automatically given to you. You basically have unlimited ammo. You just have to reload. There's no picking up ammo in this game, which I find pretty interesting because it kind of keeps you into the action instead of doing the, uh, you know, instead of running around and trying to do the pick up ammo all the time. So this game is very good at that. That it keeps you in the action. It keeps you entertained. So you're not looking around for ammo, or if you know you get on a big kill streak, you don't have to run out of ammo and run all over the place and start looking for it. Now, right here is a total fail, because I did not look up her ability either. So, her ultimate is apparently a grenade, and I accidentally just threw it into a wall. So, <laughs> yeah, I'm not that good with this character, but I think she's really underpowered, because the pistols do almost absolutely no damage. I think her goal is to be more of an annoyance character, so to say. So, you want to be kind of sprinting all over the place and just having the enemy not focus on the objective and try to kill you. So, she is really, really good with that. So when you finish a game, you get the play of the game, which is pretty cool. It's like, you know, the end kill or whatever, the kill cam and Call of Duty. So right here, the game kind of, it's, the game decides kind of randomly. It's usually by most kills. Sometimes it's actually not. So right here, it was like a triple kill or a quadruple kill with the cannon and the gun. And I don't know how the game's algorithm is with that, because I'll show you in the next game. It was like, it wasn't too spectacular and decided to pick that. And at the end, you get your experience, some bonuses, but because this is just versus the AI, not with players, you don't get any experience. You do get experience if you play with players versus the AI. So that's actually pretty cool that you technically don't have to go online and fight other players. You can just fight bots, but but I think this game's always online, so there isn't really any true single-player mode that I can think of. All right. Talked a lot, but now we're on to the second thing. So here's where we're going to get into the scores and all that stuff while you guys watch this game. So just to, I guess sum up this game in a nutshell is it's basically we had two places to defend and we pretty much just camped the choke points and went insane. And also the starting areas are really nice looking. I'm not sure what map this is based on. I don't know what country exactly, but uh, what do you call it? There's plenty to look at and plenty to shoot around. So the two major issues with the game. One is actually a non-issue for probably 90% of the player base, but it will be an issue for streamers. Is the game takes a metric ton of resources. So, while streaming, I can't seem to... It's very hard to get it to not high encoding. So, for example, on OBS, my streaming thing, if it says high encoding, that means the game is lagging the stream. And, this game, and I looked at my task manager, and this game eats your computer alive. It's pretty heavy on the GPU, uh, what is it, GPU or the CPU? I can't remember. Yeah, I think this, what is it, the CPU. I mean, the graphics are pretty good. Right now, I'm actually running on a GTX 660, which I know is not an up-to-date graphics card. It's an okay card, but I can easily run this at max settings with maybe 30 FPS or close to max settings. So, this game is very computer-friendly. So, even if you have a low-end computer, you could probably still get out 60 FPS if you just tweak the settings right. But anyways, going back to the GPU part, it's really hard to stream, and you probably need a better processor. Uh, right now I'm using an i5-2500K, and I think it's uh, 4 gigahertz or something like that, or 3.8 gigahertz speed. And I would definitely suggest, if you're looking to stream this game, or you're looking to multitask with this game, you're going to need a better processor than an i5-2500K. I mean, I know mine is pretty old, but back in the day, which was not even like... A couple, no, not even a couple of years ago. The i5 used to be some of the, one of the best uh, standard, uh, what do you call it, processors. But now it's outdated, of course. But that's my complaint with that. So, as far as the game itself, it is absolutely amazing. It's fun, which is of course the goal of the game you want it to be. It's uh, what do you call it? It's very bright. The graphics are very cool looking. The stage design is amazing. 
and uh, what do you call it? I think it just it's just there's a lot of life in this game, despite I think the lore is a little bit lacking because you can't really seem to find the lore that quickly. Also, I think if you look online, there's some like issues with it where I think the lore is supposed to be not even supposed to be killing each other. So I think there's no explanation to why you're actually in an arena killing each other, which is kind of weird. But, I mean, Blizzard did try with the lore with this game, but I don't think lore is going to really be that great for this game, to be honest. So if you're a lore fan, and if you're a lore fan of Blizzard's other games, this will probably disappoint you for the most part. And now the major issue. Now, this issue is going to be a long-term issue, and there's two of them. A is longevity, if I can even say that right, I can't even say the word correctly, but anyway, basically what I'm saying is how long could you actually tolerate playing this game? So the game is a lot of fun in short bursts, but after two hours it starts to feel a little bit the same, because it gets, a, it gets very repetitive due to the map design, which I'll also go into in a second. So I think this game is good in short bursts of like two hours or less. I don't know if he, some people of course will play it for more than two hours but for the average player I'm a little bit worried that for the average player they'll play a little bit they'll get their fun out of it and then they'll probably just stop playing eventually so that is a major issue as the game is almost a little too easy and too handheld that there's not too much you can actually do as far as like new stuff like for example playing up about five hours or four hours of Bastion I kind of gotten everything I needed to expect out of Bastion like I don't I don't think there's really that much new techniques or cool kills I can possibly do unless I just get really really lucky so that's one issue but that's a minor issue I mean you could say that for almost any game like Daisy for example you know you quit the game you come back quit the game come back games like that uh, going back to and now the level design now this is what sucks the most is the level design the levels they're beautiful looking they're awesome they, you know they're brightly colored they they don't look the same, but the problem is it is extremely claustrophobic, very claustrophobic. And this game is actually a perfect example of that, where this whole entire game I'm literally just going to sit in like about one area and just absolutely destroy everybody with my teammates. And it's just the game, there's too many corridors and there's only a few different like flanking points. So for most of these spots where you have to defend your base. There's usually only a middle section where if you run through the middle, you're going to get killed in five seconds, of course. And then there's maybe two upper levels. At the moment, I think it's just because everybody's a new player, people aren't using the upper levels. But there's usually only one or two upper levels, so if you can easily expect kind of where the enemies are coming from. And also, depending on what teammates you're playing, you can actually see enemies through walls. I think that's some class's ability, I'm not sure exactly how that works. But yeah, you can see enemies through walls, walls depending on who did what. So you can easily tell where people are coming from, and it's really not that hard to set up a flanking position. And kind of wish, hopefully in the future, because I don't think this is something they could fix anytime soon, but the maps are, are just very claustrophobic. I mean, if you have claustrophobia, this is probably not going to be the game for you, because you're literally just stuck in corners, in corners and little corridors for almost the whole entire time. So this does make up uh, some interesting techniques for flanking and stuff because of course if you're defense, if you get the capture point first, you could set up an awesome defensive team. So right here, we already know we're gonna win because we're over 70%. So I decided to move in a little bit and try to get some extra kills. But anyway, you could easily set up camping spots and just totally annihilate the other team. So I think that's gonna be also a little bit off-putting that the fact that the defensive team can the defensive team usually wins. Even though technically that's how it's supposed to be in a MOBA, you know, the person with the best defense has the good, best offense. But this game, it's a little way too easy to do that. Like right now, the rest of the video, I'm just running in for fun and just attacking people. So now to rate, to give the game a rating. So on a scale of nine, of one to ten, I'm gonna give the game a, a solid eight out of ten. And as you can see right there, I came back from the dead somehow, which is a little bit weird. But I'm giving the game solid eight out of ten. The fact is, the graphics are amazing, the gunplay is really simple, and the game is very enjoyable. A new player who even sucks at FPS can probably get into this super easily. It's great in short bursts, this is not a game you have to dedicate a huge amount of time to. And the level design, I mean not the design, but the levels are amazing despite the fact it's claustrophobic. 
The reason why I didn't give it a 9 out of 10 or 10 out of 10 was mainly because of the, the claustrophobic levels, which I think is a huge issue because if your maps suck in a MOBA, that's a huge problem considering maps take up most of it. So thanks for watching. As you can see here, I was literally 7 points off from a freaking loot crate. <laughs> I wanted to show you guys a loot crate, and they could have given me 7 measly experience so I could show you guys a loot box, but... Anyways, thanks for watching. Let me know what you guys think about this game. I don't do too many reviews, but I will be doing another review for Daisy 0.60. But if you have seen my rant video, you can tell why I haven't been able to do the review. But anyway, completely recommend this game. I think the $40 price point is what takes it over the top because Blizzard could have easily charge $60 for this game. But because it's $40, I think you're getting a huge amount of value considering there's no paywalls yet so the future of the game is either going to depend on i think it will do extremely well but it's really going to depend on how they fix the maps of course character balancing because some characters are op like the one i love <laughs> unfortunately it's going to go yeah that that i have one other thing but it escapes my mind right now but anyways thanks for watching if you like the video thumbs it up etc let me know in the comments below you're going to try out this game and it's free till may 9th right now so i would definitely if you have the time check out the game before deciding to drop $40 on something you may or may not like.